Hello everyone and welcome back to The Breakdown. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can start a server in Minecraft 1.13.2. This is going to be a step-by-step -step guide. I'm going to take you through every single part of the process. But first, I do want to mention that this is not a 24-hour server, meaning you can't play on this server with anybody and everybody. You can only play on this server with your friends, family, people you trust. If you want to make a public server where you can go and like post the IP in the comments, which don't do that, by the way, unless you buy a server through somewhere like Game Servers, which is the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash mc server. You can go down there and get an awesome 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server that's not going to use your own computer's resources, whereas this server that we're creating in this video will use your computer's resources, so if you don't have a good computer, you probably won't be able to host this server. And if you go with game servers, that's not going to matter because it uses their hardware. All you do is join the server. It's as simple as that. And it's all going to cost you just $1 per month. Yeah, you heard me right. $1 per month gets you an awesome 24-hour DDoS protected Minecraft server. We personally use game servers and love them. You can check them out at the first link down below. Again, that is the breakdown.xyz slash mc server. Nevertheless, if you don't want a server that you can play on any time, if you're okay with it using your own computer's resources, then guess what? Let's go ahead and get one started. So the first thing you want to do is go to the second link down below, and it will take you here. This is actually our in-depth article on starting a 1.13 server. It goes through everything, and if I go a little fast in some parts, this article right here will probably help you out and get things uh, slowed down a bit. But nevertheless, what we want to do on this page is click on the download button right here under step one. And then once you've done that, it takes you off to here, where you then want to go ahead and click on Minecraft underscore server dot one dot thirteen dot two dot jar there. Click on that and it will download it down here in the bottom left. You then want to go ahead and click on save eventually or confirm. Wait for it. Wait for it. And we want to go ahead and click keep down here. I promise this is 100% safe guys. This is from minecraft.net, Minecraft's official website. So we know this is safe. Now we go ahead and minimize our browser here. We have the server file right here on our desktop. If yours isn't on your desktop, it's in your downloads folder. So come up to the window icon. It's in the top left for me. It's probably in the bottom left for you. Click on that and then type in downloads right like this. Open up your downloads folder here and you can drag your server file from your downloads folder to your desktop. Once it's on your desktop, we need to go ahead and create a new folder and we need to title this folder really anything, but I'm just going to title it 1.13.2 server, right? Simple as that. Then take your server file here, drag it into your 1.13.2 server folder, open up that folder, and now we want to go ahead and right click and create a new text document, right? See that new text document. Then just leave it as is. You can leave it titled new text document. Then you want to go ahead and open it up. And in this new text document, we want to go to the description of this video and find these codes, right? And basically this is what allows you to add more RAM to your server, change RAM, start your server, all that stuff. For this server, I'm going to do two gigabytes. For most servers, two gigabytes will be plenty for vanilla servers. Once you start adding in plugins and everything like that via bucket, which you can check out how to do with the I at the top of your screen. But once you do all that, you'll need more RAM. But for a normal vanilla server, one gigabyte or two gigabytes of RAM is plenty. So we want to go ahead and copy this from the description down below, paste it in here, and then go ahead and do file, save as. And then we want to save this as a run.bat file. And then we want to save save type. We want to change this to all files, right? So save type as all files, file name run.bat. Then go ahead and click save here and we can close out of everything that we have open. We can also delete the new text document that we created. Now go ahead and double click on the run file here. At this point, it should go ahead and run your server, right? You'll see command prompt opened up right like this and it'll go through and run things, but eventually it'll stop. Now, if yours doesn't do this, if yours doesn't run anything, if it doesn't create the EULA file here and the logs file and all that stuff. Well, then I have a solution for you. Just go to the description down below and find this. This is our article on how to download and install the Java development kit, which is something you need to start a Minecraft server. So this is our tutorial on that. Go down through here and get this installed. If you install this and it still doesn't work, I still have a solution for you. And that is also linked in the description down below. And it will take you here. This is how to install the jar fix to repair your jar files. Just click right here. It'll download a program. Run that program and just like that it will fix any and all issues you have 
with Java files and then you'll be able to double click on your run file here and it will generate these. Eventually though, it'll say it failed, right? It can't do, it's stopping server. What's happening? Just press any key to continue. Well, that's what we're gonna do. Press any key to continue and we wanna find this file, EULA. You should be able to double click on it and it should open in Notepad. You then wanna go to this link right here, read over the Minecraft EULA and as long as your server isn't going to break it, you can go ahead and change EULA equals false to EULA equals true, just like that. Then go ahead and click file, save, and then we can double click on our run file yet again. Now this will start your server on up, right? At this point, you could join your server locally via your IPv4 address or by just typing in localhost, all one word, into Minecraft. But that's not how your friends join. And I don't know about you, if I'm gonna start a Minecraft server, I want my friends to be able to join my server. So we need to get all that set up. But eventually, you will see over here that says done. So go ahead and type stop to stop our server and we're gonna allow our friends to join this server. So once it's stopped, it'll say press any key to continue. Go ahead and do that. And then we need to click on the Windows icon again. Again, for me, it's in the top left. For you, it's in the bottom left of your screen. But right here it is. And then you want to type in CMD. Then you want to right click on CMD and run that as an administrator. And then in here, you want to type in IP CONFIG, IP config, and then hit enter. It's going to show you some stuff like this. And what we're looking for here is two numbers, our IPv4 address and our default gateway. So as you can see, my IPv4 address is 192.168.1.123. Yours may be completely different from that, and that is perfectly fine. But whatever it is, just take note of it. And then for our default gateway, again, mine is 192.168.1.1. Yours might be completely different from that. And if that is the case, that is okay. So just go ahead, make note of both of those numbers, and then we want to come back over here to our Minecraft server folder we created. And we should have this server properties file, right? It's a properties file. It's called server. Go ahead and double click on that. Now mine opens in notepad. You may have to select yours to open with notepad. It might open up something like, um, let me see here, open up something like this, right? Go through and select notepad to open up that properties file. Once you're in here, we want to find a server dash IP, which is right here. Right, see that? So we wanna take that, and next to that, we wanna type RIPv4 address, which again is right over here. Now for me, that is 192.168.1.123. Yours may be completely different, perfectly fine. Whatever it is, type it in right here, and then go ahead and click File, Save, and you can close out of your server properties file. Now, once you've done that, we need to go ahead and open up our browser, right? So if we go up here to our browser, we then need to go ahead and type in our default gateway just directly into a new tab on our browser, right? So here, boom, brand spanking new tab on our browser. In this, type your default gateway. Now, mine was 192.168.1.1. Whatever yours is, type that into your browser. Maybe the same as mine, maybe different, and hit enter. Now, most likely, this will be different. For me, I have this nice GUI login box. You might have a login box that comes down from the top of the screen. It might just be a pop-up. Whatever it is though, you will get some kind of login box. What do you enter here? Well, we have an article on how to find your router's password. And this gives you so many different methods. I think six different methods, five different methods on how to find your router's password. It goes down through everything. And once you've got your router's password and username from these methods, you can come back over here, enter it in, and then click sign in. It's a pretty simple process. And from here, all we need to do is port forward. Now I know port forwarding scares a lot of people and I get that, but I've helped millions of people port forward so we can do this. And we actually have an in-depth article on how to port forward here. And specifically this video shows you how to port forward on all of the top modern routers out there today. This shows you how to do it. Netgear, everything is covered here. So go there, check that out and that should help you port forward if this video doesn't. But let's go ahead and we're gonna do this. So the first thing we wanna do on the Linksys router here is we wanna go to security. Now for yours, yours may also be in security. It may be in NAT gaming, it may be in advanced, it may be in advanced and then advanced again, okay? But for me, it's in security. Then we're looking for apps and gaming. Now for you, it may be NAT gaming, it may be port forwarding, it may be port forwarding slash port triggering. But for me, it's in apps and gaming. Once I click on app gaming, I actually then have to click on single port forward. Forward, right so right there single port forward yours may just be called port forward or port forwarding or port forwarding slash port triggering it could also just be called nat gaming or nat forwarding or something like that but 
Once you've found this, you should have a few options. Now I have to click add a new single port forward. You may not have to do that. It might just be a big list of ports, but basically you should have a few different sections. First off, you should have something like an ID or a name. Basically, this is just for your own reference. It doesn't matter what you put in here. I'm just going to put in Minecraft for anywhere that it asks for a port. If it asks for port one and port two or external and internal, right? Or starting port and ending port, whatever it says, for port forwarding, put in 25565, five, right? For internal port or anything else to do with a port, put 25565. Five. For your protocol, you want to do both or TCP slash UDP or UDP slash TCP. Whatever you do, you want to make sure both protocols are selected. If you can't select both protocols, all you need to do is do it once for TCP, once for UDP, and then you're done. But for me, I can do both, so that's what I'm gonna do, and if you can do both, that's what you need to do. For your device IP, this is actually going to be our IPv4 address that we found over here. In my case, 192.168.1.1, 192.168.1.123, right? And that is the IPv4 address that we have over here, as you can see. There is that number and it matches over here. You may just have a list of devices. If that's the case, select your computer for that device. Now go ahead and click save and then click apply, okay, whatever yours says, I have to click save and then I click apply and then I click okay and then I'm done port forwarding. So after you've port forward, what you wanna do is go ahead and launch your server right back on up right here with the run file, right? So double click on that. And then once that is set up, all we wanna do is come over here to games, in my case, or whatever, you keep Minecraft and you wanna open up Minecraft 1.13.2, right? So we're gonna join your server in two ways. We're gonna join it how you can test to make sure everything's up. And then we can join it how your friends are going to join your server. So once we've got 1.13.2, open here we can just launch right on into multiplayer right like so and what is this play.breakdowncraft.com oh yeah that is our awesome 1.13.2 minecraft server it is survival if you are just looking for a basic 1.13.2 survival server where you can just get on there it's grief protected you don't have to worry about people stealing your stuff and stuff like that come play on play.breakdowncraft.com all the info is in the description down below but it's a mighty fun time we put a ton of work into it so uh yeah but nevertheless what about your server that we're starting here we'll just direct connect and then type in local host right then hit enter now this might not work for everybody as you can see it didn't work for me there and the reason for that is because sometimes the local host connections gets all kerfuffled and messed up and everything so if you want to join it off your local host just enter in your ipv4 address now this is how you can test your server now in my case that was 192.168.1.123 and then hit enter and now it'll let us on into our server we can see it pop over here nick's games has joined the game and yeah simple stuff like that now as you can see here we're in the game we're in a minecraft server we're in the minecraft server that we started but that's how you can join what if you want your friends to join well pretty simple stuff here disconnect from your server obviously because we need to join it how your friends will join it and then go to the description down below and go to what's my ip right here it is now on this screen for you there's black boxes and this is why you don't want to just give this ip address out to everybody and if you want to do that you need to get something with game servers because as you can see this is where you live this is your address and everything or your latitude and longitude coordinates in your city your region and all that stuff and then your IP address that is how they're getting all this stuff right so with that you want to make sure you only give this to people you trust but because of that I have a big box over on the right hand side of the screen and I have a black box over my IP address but you can see the last three digits just to know when confirm that it is in fact working and then I'm not doing any trickery here and what you see here is what you see in Minecraft but nevertheless let's go ahead and copy your IP address here open Minecraft back up and then we want to go ahead and direct connect this time to our public IP address then you want to go ahead and just click on join server and just like that it will launch us on into the server here the same one we were just in we can open up the uh, CMD with the server file there and we can see that Nick's games did in fact join the server and just like that guys you have a Minecraft server up and running if you have any issues after this point if your friends can't join most likely there's an issue with your port forward or there is an issue with a firewall blocking the connection right now if you see that Nick's games move too quickly we need to give this server more RAM that'll solve that 
bad issue. But nevertheless, there's most likely an issue with your firewall or with your antivirus, either on your computer or on your router, causing an issue with like uh, things, you know, rocking and rolling and happening with uh, your friends joining, right? So that's most likely the issue there. Otherwise, your friends should be able to join off of your public IP address. Also, for some reason, people like to know what seed I'm in. And it, 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 it won't work for some reason. Anyway, what I do want to show you guys how to do though real quick is op yourself. So come over here to the Minecraft CMD window that we have. Type OP and then your username. In my case, that's Nick's Games. And now... We might be able to do slash seed. There we go. And there's the seed to the world. And uh, that's how you can op yourself. And now we can do things like slash game mode creative. Right like so. And fly away and things like that. So there we have it, guys. That is how you can start your very own Minecraft server. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section down below. I am down there every day replying to nearly every single comment. But nevertheless, guys, come join us on play.breakdowncraft.com if you want an awesome 1.13.2 server. My name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. And I'm out, guys. Peace.